Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 4 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is matrix algebra. As we have discussed earlier also, in many data mining problems, we encounter with multivariate data. To handle multivariate data, your life becomes easier if you use matrix algebra and different matrix algebra results. It actually, matrix algebra forms an important tool for data visualization, analyzing the data and uh, handling the data in different data mining applications. For the example, in the principal component analysis, the decomposition of matrix, singular value decomposition plays a very important role. Actually, the objective of principal component analysis is to reduce the dimension of the data and for that purpose, we use singular value decomposition. Similarly, for association analysis, we use correlation matrix. Even for data representation also, we use matrix notations. So, in one direction of the matrix, we take variables and in another direction, we take different cases or different observations on the variables. Therefore, this matrix algebra forms an important tool for the data mining. So, in this lecture, we discuss uh, some of the uh, results of uh, vectors and matrix algebra which we may require in subsequent lectures. Now, first we define vectors. Suppose you have n elements a 1, a 2, a n and we arrange these elements in a row or column. So, suppose we arrange these elements in a column. So, this a is equal to this column a 1, a 2, a n. This is called a column vector and the order of this vector is n cross 1. Here, a i denotes the ith element of a. Then we define transpose of a as say a dash equal to. Now, we arrange these column elements in a row. So, the first element of this row vector is the first element of this column. Second element of this row vector is the second element of this column and so on. So, A transpose is a row vector of order 1 cross n. Now, suppose B is equal to B 1, B 2, B n transpose. So, obviously, B is a column vector of order n cross 1. Then we define A transpose B as say A transpose is A 1, A 2, A n and B is B 1, B 2, B n. This is of order 1 cross n and b is of order n cross 1. So, ultimately we get an element which is of order 1 cross 1 and 
it is defined as v multiply a 1 by v 1 plus a 2 into b 2 and so on plus a n into b n. So, ultimately you get summation j equal to 1 to n a j b j. Then we define the Euclidean distance between two vectors. So, suppose x and y are two n cross 1 vectors with the elements of a x as x 1, x 2, x n and the elements of y as y 1, y 2, y n. Then d x y denotes the Euclidean distance between x and y. Then we define the square of Euclidean distance d x y square as summation j equal to 1 to n x j minus y j whole square. So, we take the difference between the jth element of x and jth element of y take a square of this and then take summation over j, j running from 1 to n. And in terms of vector notations, you can write this summation as x minus y transpose x minus y. You can easily verify that the Euclidean distance is symmetric means d x y is equal to d y x. Because of this square x j minus y j square is equal to y j minus x j square. So, d x y is equal to d y x. For example, suppose x is the vector with elements 2, 3, 4, 2 and y is the vector with elements minus 2, 2, 4, 3. Then we define d x y square equal to 2 minus minus 2 whole square plus 3 minus 2 square plus 4 minus 4 square plus 2 minus 3 square. And finally, you obtain 18 and if you take the square root of d x y square, then you obtain 3 under root 2. Then we define linearly dependent and linearly independent vectors. So, you have a set of vectors a 1, a 2, a k. Each of these vectors is of the same order. Say you can take the order of each of these vectors as n cross 1. Then this set of vectors is said to be linearly dependent if there exist k constants c 1, c 2, c k not all equal to 0 such that the linear combination c 1, a 1 plus c 2, a 2 plus 1 plus c k, a k is equal to 0. So, if it is possible to find such kind of non-zero constants, at least some of the constants are non-zero, such that this linear combination is zero, then we say that this set of vectors is linearly dependent. And this set of vectors a1, a2, a k is said to be linearly independent if c 1 a 1 plus c 2 a 2 plus 1 plus c k a k equal to 0 implies that all the c's are equal to 0 means c 1 equal to c 2 so on equal to c k equal to 0. Now, we define orthogonal vectors. So, suppose a and b are two n cross 1 vectors with a transpose b equal to 0 and uh, notice that a transpose b is equal to summation a j b j. A j is the jth element of A and b j is the jth element of B. Then A and B are said to be orthogonal vectors. And suppose you have a set of vectors A 1, A 2, A m, then this set of vectors is said to be mutually orthogonal. If for all i not equal to j, A i transpose A j is equal to 0. That is, for all i not equal to j, a i and a j are orthogonal to each other. Orthogonal vectors, the set of vectors a 1, a 2, a m is said to be mutually orthogonal if a i transpose a j is equal to 1, if i equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j. So, for i equal to j means a i transpose a i is equal to 1. 
and for i not equal to j, a i transpose a j is 0, if i is not equal to j. And you may write it equal to delta i j. So, delta i j takes value 1 if i is equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j and it is called chronical delta. Then we define vector space, the set of all possible vectors say v which can be obtained as a linear combinations of the vectors a 1, a 2, a k form a vector space spanned by the vectors a 1, a 2, a k. So, you have a set of vectors a 1, a 2, a k and then we consider the set of all vectors which can be obtained as a linear combination of these vectors means set of vectors of the form then this v is called the vector space spanned by the vectors a 1 a 2 a k and the minimal number of vectors needed to span v is called the dimension of v. Now, we consider the definition and different results of matrix algebra. A matrix is defined as a rectangular array of numbers. So, you have m n elements or m n numbers a i j i equal to 1 to m j equal to 1 to n and we arrange these m n numbers in this form that is we arrange these numbers in m rows and n columns. Then A is an m cross n matrix, this m cross n is the order of the matrix and if m is equal to n, then A is a square matrix. So, number of rows is equal to number of columns in a square matrix. Now, we define transpose of a matrix, we denote it by a dash. So, to obtain the transpose of a matrix, what we do? Say, suppose you take this column, you write this column or the elements of this column in a row, say a 1 1, a 2 1, so on a m 1. Then you take the second column and write the elements of second column in a row and so on. You take the last column and arrange these elements in a row. So, ultimately you obtain a matrix of order n cross m. So, this matrix is called the transpose of matrix A. Notice that the i j th element of A is the j i th element of A transpose. Symmetric matrix, a square matrix A is symmetric if A transpose is equal to A. So, obviously, the i j th element of A transpose is the same as the i j th element of A. What is the i j th element of A transpose? It is A j i and the i j th element of A is A i j. So, these two are equal. Now, the vector space spanned by the columns of a matrix A is called the column space of the matrix. Similarly, the vector space spanned by the rows of a matrix A is called the row space of A. And the dimension of the column or row space is the column or row rank of A. If you take the dimension of the column space, then it is the column rank of A 
and if you take the dimension of the rho space of A, then it is the rho rank of A. And uh, if you consider the rho rank and column rank, then rho rank of a matrix A is equal to its column rank. And uh, then this is called the rank of matrix A. For m cross n matrix with column rank R, so obviously R is less than or equal to n, because there are n columns. So, naturally R is less than or equal to n. Then A is of full column rank if R is equal to n. Similarly, if you consider the row rank, then row rank is also R. So, you observe that R is less than or equal to m and the matrix A is of full row rank if R is equal to m. This also proves that R is less than or equal to minimum of m n. Vectorization of a matrix. Suppose uh, A is m cross n matrix with the i j th element A i j. Then we define vector A as A 1 1, A 2 1, so on A m 1, then we take A 1 2, A 2 2, so on A m 2 and so on, A 1 n, A 2 n and so on A m n transpose. So, you have this column vector. How you get this column vector? You take the first column of matrix A, arrange the first column here means ultimately if you take transpose of this then uh, the elements are A 1 1, so on A m 1. So, we arrange the first column of matrix A here, then we take the elements of second column A 1 2 up to A m 2 and so on at last you get A m n. Null space. Null space of a matrix A is the set of all vectors V such that A V equal to 0. So, we consider vector V which gives A V equal to 0 and V is not equal to 0 and then we consider the set of all such vectors then the set of all such vectors is called the null space of A. Then the dimension of the null space of matrix A is called the nullity of A. Now, one can prove this result. Here actually I am discussing many results uh, without giving their proofs and if you are interested in their proofs, then uh, you may consult any good matrix algebra book. So, if you take nullity of A plus rank of A, this is equal to total number of columns in A. Non singular matrix. If rank of a square matrix A and A is of order n cross n, it is a square matrix and its rank is also n then A is called a non singular matrix. So, for the square non singular matrix A, one can easily verify that if you take determinant of A, then determinant of A is not equal to 0. Now, suppose A is m cross n matrix of rank n and n is less than or equal to m then what is the order of A transpose A? It is A transpose is of order n cross m, A is of order m cross n. So, ultimately A transpose A is of order n cross n. 
rank of A is n, then rank of A transpose A is also n. So, A transpose A is a non singular matrix, it is a square matrix as well as it is a non singular matrix provided the rank of A is equal to the number of columns in A which is n here. Then we define diagonal matrix. So, D is a diagonal matrix which has diagonal elements D 1, D 2, D n and all other elements are equal to 0. For example, if you consider this matrix 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. Now, this is a diagonal matrix. These diagonal elements are non zero and all other elements are equal to zero. Now, suppose uh, A is a matrix of order m cross n say, then rank of A is equal to rank of A transpose A and this is equal to rank of A A transpose. So, all these three matrices have the same rank A A transpose A and A A transpose. Then if A is m cross n matrix and B is n cross q matrix, then transpose of A transpose is equal to A this result you can easily verify. So, first in obtaining A transpose you have arranged rows in columns and then again you take transpose. So, you have arranged columns in rows. So, ultimately you get A. Then a B transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. Then suppose I n is a diagonal matrix having diagonal elements equal to 1. So, all the diagonal elements are equal to 1 and all off diagonal elements are equal to 0. Then I n is called an identity matrix. The order of this identity matrix is n or n cross n. We denote it by I n. And for any matrix of order m cross n, if you post multiply A by I n, then you obtain A. In fact, if you take an identity matrix of order m and you take I m A, then this is also equal to A. Inverse of a matrix for a square non singular matrix A, you can define inverse of A as we denote it by A inverse, say a matrix satisfying A inverse A equal to A, a inverse equal to I n. So, this is inverse of A provided A inverse A is equal to I n or A inverse is equal to I n. Then for the non singular matrix A, if you take inverse of A inverse, then again you obtain A and A transpose inverse is equal to A inverse transpose. Then uh, for non singular square matrices A and B, both A and B are square matrices as well as non singular. Then A B inverse is equal to B inverse A inverse. Uh, of course, uh, I am not giving here the proof of all these results, but you can find the proof in any st standard matrix algebra textbook. 
and then for the diagonal matrix D, the inverse of diagonal matrix D, say D inverse is diagonal D 1 inverse, D 2 inverse, so on D n inverse. This result you can easily verify D 1 0 0 0 D 2 0 and you multiply it by D 1 inverse 0 0 0 D 2 inverse 0 and you can easily verify that the product of these two matrices is an identity matrix. So, for obtaining the inverse of a diagonal matrix simply you have to take the inverse of each and every element of the diagonal. Now, you define eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, suppose A is n cross n square matrix, then uh, you take determinant of A minus lambda i n then determinant of A minus lambda i n, what you are actually doing is you are subtracting lambda from each and every diagonal element of A and then you take the determinant. This is a polynomial of order n in lambda and if you take determinant A minus lambda i n equal to 0, this is called the characteristic equation. And since this is a polynomial of order n in lambda, if you solve this equation, it has n roots. And suppose lambda i, i equal to 1 to n denotes the root of the characteristic equation. So, these are n roots of the characteristic equations lambda i, i equal to 1 to n. Then lambda is also are also called eigenvalues or characteristic roots of the all the latent roots of A. Further, if you take determinant of A minus lambda i i n, this determinant is equal to 0. So, A minus lambda i i n, this is a singular matrix. So, since A minus lambda i i n is a singular matrix, you can find a vector, say we denote the vector by q i such that A minus lambda i i n q i is equal to 0. Actually, A minus lambda i i n is a singular matrix. So, different columns of A minus lambda i i n are linearly dependent and then you can find a linear combination of different combina different columns of A minus lambda i i n which takes value 0. So, this is that linear combination and this implies that a q i is equal to lambda i q i. Then this q i is called the eigenvector of A corresponding to eigenvalue lambda i. So, lambda i is the eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector is q i. Now, we define idempotent matrix. Suppose a square is equal to A. How we define A square? This is equal to A into A and A square is equal to A. Then we say that A is an idempotent matrix. Now, suppose A is m cross n matrix of rank n and then Suppose you define P equal to A, A transpose A inverse A transpose and M equal to I M minus A, A transpose A inverse A transpose. Then both P and M 
are idempotent matrices. Further, m a is equal to 0 and a transpose m is also 0. To prove these results, let us take a square of p, which is equal to a, a transpose a inverse, a transpose again you have a, a transpose a inverse, a transpose. Now, this is equal to a transpose a inverse, a transpose a is identity matrix. So, you get a, a transpose a inverse, a transpose, which is equal to p. Similarly, you can prove that m is idempotent because m is equal to i m minus p. So, square of m is i m minus p into i m minus p, which is equal to i m minus p minus p plus p square. And since p square is equal to p, you get i m minus p, this p square is equal to p. So, 1 p will cancel out and then you obtain m. Similarly, if you take m a, then m a is equal to first we multiply i m by a. So, you get a minus a, a transpose a inverse, a transpose a. Then this is an identity matrix. So, you get a minus a, which is equal to 0. Similarly, you can prove this result also a transpose m equal to 0. Now, suppose l n is a column vector with all elements equal to 1. So, l n is equal to 1, 1, so on 1 transpose. This is of order n cross 1. And then we define p equal to 1 upon n l n l n transpose q equal to i n minus 1 upon n l n l n transpose. So, obviously, q is equal to i n minus p. Now, suppose uh, for any vector y, we take p y. So, p y is equal to 1 upon n l n l n transpose y, then l n transpose y is equal to you have 1 1 so on 1 here and suppose the elements of y are y 1 y 2 so on y n. So, what you get summation i equal to 1 to n y i or you take j here say summation j equal to 1 to n y j and then you are dividing by n. So, ultimately this gives you the mean of y 1, y 2, y n say we denote it by y power and then you have 1 l n here. So, ultimately you obtain y bar into l n. Then if you take q y, then q y is equal to y you obtain y here minus you get p y, p y is equal to y bar l n. So, ultimately what you obtain y 1, y 2, y n minus y bar so on y bar. So, you get y 1 minus y bar, y 2 minus y bar so on y n minus y bar or you can write it as y minus y bar l n. So, uh, you get the observations y 1, y 2, y n as deviation from mean and then you can easily verify that p and q both of these matrices are idempotent symmetric. You can also verify that p 
p into q is equal to 0. You simply multiply p and q and p into q is equal to 0. Then we define orthogonal matrices. A is a square matrix of order n cross n. Then it is said to be orthogonal matrix if A transpose A is equal to i n and A A transpose is also i n. Now, here are some properties of the orthogonal matrices. Actually, inverse of A is equal to transpose of A because A inverse A is equal to i n and here A transpose A is also i n. So, obviously, A transpose is equal to A inverse. If you take determin determinant of A, then determinant of A is either plus 1 or minus 1. And suppose A i is the ith column of A, then A i transpose A j is equal to delta i j. That is A i transpose A j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and it is 0 if i is not equal to j. To prove this result, you make use of this result A transpose or this property of the orthogonal matrices A transpose A equal to i n. Similarly, if A within bracket i is the ith row of A, then A i A j transpose is equal to delta i j. Means for i equal to j, this product is equal to 1 otherwise 0. Suppose A and B are orthogonal matrices, then A B is also orthogonal matrix. You can easily verify it. So, if you take A B transpose A B, this is equal to B transpose A transpose A B. Then since A is orthogonal, so A transpose A is equal to identity matrix. So, you get B transpose B, B is also orthogonal, so you get identity matrix. Now, the matrices A and B of order n cross n are said to be similar if there exists a non singular matrix Q such that B is equal to Q inverse A Q. So, if you form this kind of relationship between A and B, if you can obtain a non singular matrix Q such that B can be written as Q inverse A Q, then we say that A and B are similar matrices. And notice that A is always similar to A because uh, you just take Q equal to identity matrix to prove this result. And if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. Of course, you can write A equal to Q B Q inverse. So, if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. And if A is similar to B and B is similar to C, then A is similar to C. This result can also be easily proved. First, to write uh, B equal to Q inverse A Q and then you write C equal to say P inverse B P and then you try to form the relationship between A and C. So, you observe that A and C are also similar. Now, suppose A is a non singular matrix, then A is similar to a diagonal matrix that is there exists a non singular matrix Q such that Q inverse A Q is equal to lambda which is equal to diagonal lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n or A is equal to Q lambda Q inverse. Now, this result is quite important. For any non singular matrix A, you can obtain a non singular matrix Q and a diagonal matrix lambda such that you can write A equal to Q lambda Q inverse. 
Now, suppose A is a square matrix, then there exists an orthogonal matrix Q such that Q tra transpose A Q is equal to lambda. So, here A is a square matrix, Q is an orthogonal matrix and Q transpose A Q is equal to a diagonal matrix lambda or you can write A equal to Q lambda Q transpose. Now, we prove this result. So, suppose Q 1, Q 2, Q n, these are n linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So, these lambdas are n eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors are Q 1, Q 2, Q n and uh, then uh, q i transpose q i is equal to 1 and for i not equal to j q i transpose q j is equal to 0. Then we write matrix q as q 1, q 2, q n. So, the first column of q is the eigenvector q 1, second column is eigenvector q 2 and so on. Then q transpose q is equal to i n because q i transpose q j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j. Notice that q 1, q 2, q and these are the eigenvectors. Then a q is equal to lambda 1 q 1, lambda 2 q 2, so on lambda n q n say a q i is equal to lambda i q i for all i equal to 1 to n and then we combine all the n equations in this matrix form. So, you get a q is equal to q lambda where lambda is a diagonal matrix or you take q transpose a q equal to q transpose q lambda and q transpose q is equal to identity matrix. So, you get lambda here q transpose a q is equal to lambda. Now, suppose a is n cross n idempotent matrix and the rank of a is r which is less than or equal to n. Then the eigenvalues of a are either 0 or 1 trace of A is equal to R and R is the rank of A. So, trace of A is equal to rank of A equal to R. Then if P is orthogonal, then P A P transpose is also idempotent and I minus A is idempotent and A i minus a equal to i minus a, a equal to 0. So, if a is idempotent, then i minus a is also idempotent. Now, to prove the first result, there exists an orthogonal matrix Q such that a equal to Q lambda Q transpose. And uh, since a is idempotent, a square is equal to a. And what is a square? a square is equal to q lambda q transpose q lambda q transpose and q transpose q is identity matrix. So, you get q lambda square q transpose. Now, this shows that lambda i is equal to lambda i square from this relation and this implies that lambda i is equal to 0 or 1, because 0 and 1 are the only numbers satisfying the probability lambda i square equal to lambda i. Now, we consider symmetric eigenvalue or spectral decomposition. Uh, notice that this spectral decomposition plays very important role in principal component analysis. So, suppose A is n cross n symmetric matrix, then you can write A equal to u lambda u transpose or this is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i 
u i u i transpose. Here lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues of A and u is the matrix u 1, u 2, u n and uh, this is the matrix of standardized eigenvectors that is u u transpose equal to u transpose u equal to i n. Then for the square matrix A, determinant of A is equal to product i equal to 1 to n lambda i. You can easily verify this result by using this property and trace of A is equal to summation lambda i and then you can define A m equal to u lambda m u transpose. Actually A square is equal to u lambda square u transpose this we have already proved and similarly you can prove this result also A to the power m is equal to u lambda to the power m u transpose. Uh, now, so far we have considered the singular value decomposition for the square matrix. Now, we consider singular value decomposition for the general matrix. So, for any m cross n matrix A, where m is less than or equal to n, there exist two orthogonal matrix matrices U, which is of order m cross m and V, which is of order n cross n. Both are orthogonal matrices and a non negative m cross n matrix sigma which is equal to lambda to the power half here this lambda is a diagonal matrix and lambda to the power half means we are taking a square root of each and every diagonal element and the remaining elements are zero notice that m is less than or equal to n such that a is equal to u sigma u tra v transpose which is equal to summation j equal to 1 to m lambda j to the power half u j v j transpose. So, here lambda is a diagonal matrix of order m cross m and diagonals of lambda are called the singular values of A. Columns of u or v are left or right singular vectors of A columns of u are the left singular vectors of A and columns of v are the right singular vectors of A. Then we define matrix norm, which is a measure of size of a matrix. So, suppose A is m cross n matrix with i j th element A i j and then we define the norm of A as the norm of matrix A satisfies the following conditions. So, the norm of A must be greater than or equal to 0, norm of A is equal to 0 if and only if A is equal to 0, norm of A plus B is less than or equal to norm of A plus norm of B, where B is also m cross n matrix, then norm of alpha A is equal to mod of alpha norm of A, where alpha is a scalar. Then the different matrix norms are say P norm which is equal to summation i equal to 1 to m, j equal to 1 to n, mod a i j to the power p whole to the power 1 upon p. So, this is called p norm. Frobenius norm which is equal to square root of trace of a a transpose and uh, then trace of a a transpose is actually equal to summation i equal to 1 to n summation j equal to 1 to n mod a i j square you simply take the product uh, this A A transpose and then you take the trace of A A transpose. You get this quantity, then you take a square root of this and for P equal to 2, this norm is equivalent to Euclidean 2 norm, 
on the space of vectorized matrix means you vectorize this matrix A and then you define Euclidean norm. You get the Frobenius norm for p equal to 2. Then a spectral norm or L square norm of A is defined as the so norm A or you also denoted by norm A 2 equal to maximum x belonging to R n mod x less than or equal to 1 norm A x 2 divided by norm x 2 or you can write it as now this is a vector. So, the Euclidean norm is equal to x transpose a transpose a x divided by x transpose x and then you take maximum over x belonging to R n and norm x less than or equal to 1. Uh, again I am not going into the details, but ultimately this is equal to lambda 1 a transpose a to the power half where this lambda 1 is actually the largest eigen value of a transpose a. So, lambda 1 a transpose a is the maximum eigen value of a transpose a and uh, then uh, for simplicity we write this norm as norm of a in this form. So, we use simply this uh, notation and we omit this 2. For any x belonging to R n and x not equal to 0, we have norm a x divided by norm of x less than or equal to norm of a. And this implies that norm of a x is less than or equal to norm of a into norm of x. Actually, uh, again uh, I mentioned that uh, I am not going into the details of the proof of all these results. Just uh, notice that uh, x transpose a transpose a x divided by x transpose x can be written as x transpose v transpose lambda v x divided by x transpose v transpose v x, where a transpose a is equal to v transpose lambda v. v is an orthogonal matrix, so v transpose v is equal to identity matrix. And then we write v x equal to z. So, ultimately you get z transpose lambda z divided by z transpose z and when you maximize it with respect to z. So, if you take z equal to 1 0 0 so on transpose, then you get the maximum value and for that particular choice of z, the value of this ratio is lambda 1, the maximum Eigen value of A transpose A. So, the matrix algebra provides a powerful framework for data mining. In handling different data mining tools, we require different results of the matrices. Keeping in view, I have briefly discussed different uh, results of the matrix algebra as well as of vectors, although for most of the results. I have uh, omitted the proofs, but you can get uh, the proofs of these results in any standard matrix algebra proof. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you.
Hello everybody, now uh, the discussion which I would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which I always feel and I am sure you will also reciprocate as I proceed and when you do the course is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis. So, what we mean by multivariate? So, we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data, you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem, MCMC techniques, then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data. Now, in the recent past as we see that multivariate statistics has, has, has really increased in a, in, in a very exciting manner and if I trace back to history it has been going on slowly for the last about 70, 80 years, but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know, but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example, canonical correlation technique, in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimension uh, scaling techniques, structural equation modeling, be it in the area of finance, be it in the area of engineering, be it in the area of social sciences, be it in the area of economics, such that you are able to gather the the information from the data in such a way that it really gives you some useful set of information. Now, in the recent um, past, there has been also an explosion of large and complex data sets, but added to that there has also been a, a commensurate increase in the computing and the statistical techniques. So, obviously, the question comes that if the statistical techniques are there for small, so called small data, not the big data, not the, the, the data which is of terabytes and, and, and so on and so forth, where you use different type of computers to stay the data, the question obviously comes that are those statistical techniques really relevant when we use them in the big data sense. The question is they are not always relevant, they may not give you the best results. So, what we are seeing in years to come and, and I feel very excited about that is that how the new tools which we have already learned in statistics in multivariate statistical analysis are being redrawn, are being say for example, remodeled in such a way that they can be utilized along with the techniques of computing in a very nice manner that we are able to garner the information from big data very successfully and very nicely in such a way that they are able to portray a sense of information which we all long to have from big data, be it in say for example, medical sciences, be in the area of finance, be it in weather forecasting, be it in transportation, so on and so forth. So, obviously, it means that students, participants who are in a position with some brief mathematical background to take multivariate statistics and statistical tools as a subject in this program are assured are a very exciting future where they can use these tools to, to both gain the knowledge as well utilize them in a very best practical sense such that they are able to do some justice to the information which is given to them and get the best information from the data sets. I wish all the participants in this course the best of luck and I am sure they will also reciprocate the excitement which I have for this type of courses. Thank you.